So we're now going to do member statements. The member for Humber River, Black Creek. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My riding, Humber River, Black Creek, is home to people of diverse cultures, languages, faiths, but we all share something in common. We are getting ripped off on our auto insurance rates. This is because the auto insurance industry is allowed to classify you as high risk just for where you live. Ontario's NDP raised this important issue back in 2012, showing postal courts within places like Humber River, Black Creek, Brampton, Scarborough, and others paid more than double the rates of many other postal codes, even within Toronto. Mr. Speaker, I've done research on this postal code prejudice and found that my community had neither the highest local accident rates nor highest rates of vehicular crime, and yet our rates are sky high. I've held packed town hall meetings on the matter, written articles about it, and spoken about it door-to-door. -door. I heard stories from many people whose auto insurance premiums were higher than the value of their car, and many who needed a vehicle but couldn't afford one because of the high rates. People with clean driving records. The previous government promised relief on auto insurance rates, but in the end, the only relief we got from them happened on the night of June 7th. Ontarians as a whole pay the highest auto insurance rates in the country, yet we have the lowest claims per capita. We need real action, and I look forward to working with my colleagues to improve auto insurance here in our province. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Scarborough Agent Court. Mr. Speaker, over the weekend I had the pleasure of attending the Sri Varasiti Vinayagar Hindu Temple's annual chariot festival and bring greetings from Premier Doug Ford. This is an annual event that normally takes place on the fourth weekend of July. The Hindu deity known as Lord Ganesh, the elephant figure god, is brought out of the temple to destroy bad demons and uh, villains in the community. Mr. Speaker, drawing over more than 13,000 people annually, the event is truly a reminder of the diversity and the rich cultural mosaic of Scarborough Asian Court. It is, it is organizations and events like this one that make our city and province not only culturally and ethnically rich, but also a place where everyone can find home and community. I am sure that under the leadership of Premier Doug Ford and our progressive conservative government, community, organizations, and houses of worship like Shri Varasiti in Vinayagar Hindu Temple will continue to flourish and grow. Particularly as we open Ontario for business and ensure that everyone is able to find work and raise family. I look forward to attending many more of these events in my riding and meet community members with culturally and ethnically diverse background. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Brampton East. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ontario is a beautiful and diverse province. Our cultural diversity is an asset. It allows us to experience different cultures, ideas, concepts, and perspectives right here in Ontario. Our differences do not divide us, they strengthen us. But, Mr. Speaker, I rise today to address a very concerning pattern we've seen over the past few weeks. In London, a young man was threatened with a citizen's arrest for being an alleged illegal. In Toronto, a Muslim family was physically attacked and the victim to racist insults. In Hamilton, a couple faced racist insults and had the very lives of their innocent children threatened with death. These are just some of the rising acts of hate and Islamophobia that have become far too common, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to speak out against this hate, to say that acts of racism that target people's ethnicity, culture, religion, or otherwise have no place in this province, and further to say that to truly combat racism, we must do more than only denounce hate. We must empower communities who are victims of hate. We must work for the creation of a society that understands that in order to make diverse communities feel welcome, they must be given access to both resources and justice. We must fight Islamophobia and racism by looking at the root causes that give rise to an environment to allow this hate to exist. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you.
you. Member statements. The member for Mississauga Streetsville. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Nothing is more devastating than being told you have a horrific disease. Today, I rise in this chamber to talk about a beautiful young woman who was diagnosed with cancer. She fought hard and overcame her illness. But not only did she face her cancer with a positive attitude, as soon as she became cancer-free, she wanted to give back. She immediately began a fundraising campaign to raise money for the Trillium Health Partners Foundation and go towards the Cancer Care Centre at the Credit Valley Hospital in Mississauga. This past weekend, alongside the esteemed member from Willowdale, Willowdale my staff, campaign volunteers, and I joined over 120 other wonderful friends and families to attend a fundraiser she arranged to honour being cancer-free for over five years. Over these five years, she has managed to raise over $28,000, and every penny raised at the fundraiser was donated to the foundation. Mr. Speaker, the first time I saw her, she was on the billboard located outside the Credit Valley Hospital, where her father pointed it out to me. How hard it must have been to watch your child go through such a difficult time. On her behalf, I would like to thank the wonderful frontline doctors and nurses who provided her with the best possible treatment and cared for her throughout. Please join me in welcoming Nicola Rose and her family, Pete, Carmen, and Stephanie Rose, to the legislature today and thank her for her great work she is doing in bringing about awareness and her phenomenal fundraising efforts for our local hospital in Mississauga. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The people of Davenport and across Toronto have been shaking their heads over the last few weeks. People can't afford the sky-high rent in this city. Schools are literally crumbling, and one in four children are living in poverty. And yet this government has chosen its urgent priorities, and none of those priorities speaks to the issues that my constituents have raised again and again. Instead, the Premier and his government seem obsessed with settling scores and undermining local democracy. Yesterday, I was joined here at the Legislature by the Davenport Perth Area Bread and Bricks, a community group that takes action on issues that their members face, issues like poverty, social and economic injustice. They came to Queen's Park to ask me to fight back against any attempts by this government to regressively roll back promised ODSP and social assistance rate increases. And I want you to know that I, they can count on me to do that. They also told me they already don't get calls back from their city councillor, and yes, that's one of the Premier's so-called allies, and they asked me to stand up against the attack on Toronto's local democracy because less council seats will mean worse service, worse support. The truth is the only people who will benefit are the developers who don't want to have to build affordable housing units or pay one red cent to help maintain or repair our schools. I want to assure my constituents that I will work with our leader and caucus to use every tool we have, every ounce of energy, to fight this government and to bring democracy back to Ontario. Member Statements. The member for Orléans. Uh, this past weekend, I was very proud to attend two great events in our community of Orléans. It's always with a lot of pleasure that I meet people. It's a pleasure to meet people of our community doing activities. The is a joint council between the, my federal counterpart, MP Andrew Leslie, and myself had their end of year community fundraising event. I participated with fierté. I took part. Uh, very proud to a barbecue by the Youth Council with my, the federal MP. Our benefits uh, will be given to a women shelter in Ottawa. I wish to thank you for this initiative and the work they done every day. And we were joined by local representative and organization, fire and police services, and brought together community member for a very, very good cause. I was also honoured to attend the first ever art exhibition hosted by the Ottawa Kurdish Cultural Forum. They brought together eight talented artists from around the world, two of which were from actually our riding of Orléans, in an inspiring showcase of rich culture and diversity. I want to thank them for promoting their culture through their paintings. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
Member Statements. The member for Markham Stouffville. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, it's, uh, it's uh, wonderful to rise today to uh, recognize uh, a wonderful community festival that took place in my riding this week, and it's the Greek community of Markham. Uh, got together uh, in its uh, 29th annual uh, Greek festival, bringing together thousands of people uh, to celebrate everything that the Greek community in Markham has to offer. I wanted to thank uh, the president of the community, John Sios, for, uh, for hosting myself, uh, the member for Aurora Oak Bridges, uh, uh, as well as the member for Scarborough Agent Court and a number of other caucus members who were there, Mr. Speaker. We were there in part to show our solidarity uh, for uh, what had been a very troubled or difficult summer, uh, not only the fires in Greece, but uh, as all members will know, that uh, one of the, the victims of uh, the horrible tragedy on the Danforth uh, was a member of this community and of uh, this church in particular that hosts this event. Uh, uh, His Eminence, the Archbishop uh, Soterios, uh, the Greek Metropolitan, uh, brought a message of, uh, of healing and remembrance and uh, as I said, we took the time to remember, but we also took the time to celebrate uh, everything that is great about the community, Mr. Speaker, and I hope that all members might consider coming out uh, to Markham uh, next year as we celebrate this community once again and celebrate the 30th uh, uh, festival. I know that you will all have a great time, and, uh, and again, uh, Mr. Speaker, thank you for the opportunity to speak, and thank you to all members, and I encourage you all to visit the community next year. Member statements. Member for Toronto Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, on Sunday evening, July 22nd, a man shot 15 people on the Danforth in my riding. Two of those people have died. Subsequently, it turned out the man suffered from severe mental illness. The Ford government is cutting the funding for mental health supports in this province and potentially putting more people at risk. The Premier has expressed his sympathy for the people who were killed injured or affected by the shootings, but is not only rolling back funding for mental health already set out during the budget process in the spring, but saying part of the funds his platform allocated for mental illness will be reallocated to policing. This and other tragic events show the funding is needed to protect those who may harm themselves and others. The Premier should change direction and provide the funds. Premier. Many people in my riding ask why you're spending time on changing Toronto City Council when dealing with the recent shootings on the Danforth should be a higher priority for your government. Yeah. Ontario needs your government to focus on public safety and mental health rather than focusing on city governance. My constituents ask you to stop cuts to mental health funding, get guns off the streets, and take further steps to address the roots of violence. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Kitchener, Conestoga. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to speak about Wilmot Township's upcoming Baden Corn Festival, taking place August 11th, and the valuable role that it plays in highlighting agricultural roots in my riding and also the province. The agri-food industry is a driving force of Ontario's economy. For example, Based on the most recent numbers provided by Stats Canada, Ontario is home to nearly 50,000 farms and 70,000 farm operators. Without a doubt, a vibrant agri-food industry is vital to the success of Ontario's economy and the economy of Waterloo Region. In celebration of the rich history of the agri-food industry in Wilmot Township, the Baden Corn Festival showcases local food producers and restaurants while providing an afternoon of fun for the whole family. I would like to thank all the community organizers and local businesses who have come together to make sure that this annual tradition continues to be a great success. Firstly, I would like to thank the Baden Community Association for all their hard work in planning this event. You are providing your community a great service. Secondly, I would like to thank all of the local businesses who have stepped forward to sponsor this event for their generosity and leadership. Finally. Thank you to all the local vendors who are participating in the Baden Corn Festival this year and showcasing the great food that the Baden area and Wilmot Township has to offer. Mr. Speaker, our economy cannot grow and thrive without hardworking men and women in the agri-food industry. Therefore, I will always wholeheartedly support community events such as the Baden Corn Festival that look to showcase the great contribution that agri-food companies have made and continue to make to Ontario's economy. Member Statements, the member from Mississauga, Erin Mills. Um, I'm honoured to welcome Mr. Edward Sharma in Queen's Park. Mr. Sharma just got appointed as Director of Social 
for the UTM Conservative Youth Association. My congratulations. Mr. Edward is in his second year in international affairs and was my volunteers team leader and was a critical part of my win. Thank you very much. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to speak about a terrible tragedy that has affected a number of my constituents and concerned community members across the province and Ontario uh, and Canada. On Tuesday, July 25th, the brave ISIS murderers masqueraded more than 200 innocent Syrian Jew civilians in the government hilled city of Swaida in southwestern Syria, women, children, and elderly. I stood shoulder to shoulder with the mourning community members at a vigil on Sunday evening in front of the old city hall. We know all too well the toll that ISIS, savagery, and the Syrian civil war had had on the innocent caught in the crossfire. The province of Ontario currently provides refugees for many of them, as well as people from other crisis zones around the world. Since January 2016 alone, we have received over 36,000 refugees. This is why I'm encouraged by Minister McLeod, um, uh, McLeod Principal Stand, an MPP fee motion passed in this House last week calling on the federal government to pay it's 200. Thank you very much. Thank you.